what's up you guys, Shardness Prime here, doing another McFarlane Toys product review on the Marvel 110th scale figures. They sent me five samples over here and I'm very excited to talk about these with you guys. You can see right here we have Deadpool, we have a Spider-Man, we have Iron Man, we have Wolverine, and we have Spider-Man again, uh, designed and originally drawn by the man himself, Todd McFarlane. This is one of the very first comic books I ever remember getting as a kid, and this is the one that I wanted the most. I also really wanted the Wolverine and the Deadpool. And big thanks again, McFarlane Toys, for sending out these samples my way. If you want to see the latest from McFarlane Toys, be sure to check them out. Link is in the description below, and all opinions in this video are of my own. I haven't been asked to say anything each way. Anyway, uh, the packaging for all of these looks great. You can see the comic cover that is inspiring the statue or the figure, and then on the back you can see the comic cover again right there. They'll have the name on the sides, window creeps up to the top, not much more at the bottom. So let's get to it and crack these things open. And if you're trying to get your McFarlane Toys figures, you can't do so at Big, Big, Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> And here are the statues on the rotating base. I'm going to call them statues. And yeah, right now we're looking at them one by one on the rotating base. And I got to say, they do look good. Now, they don't have any articulation. That's fine. I knew they weren't gonna. But it's about the aesthetics with these. And I got to say, yeah, they look pretty sweet. Th these actually could be pretty nice, like, prototypes to see, uh, you know, actual articulated figures get based off of, you know, because there's some textures over here along with some interesting paint applications that I am very happy about. The price point, uh, I don't know, man. I think it's a little on the high side. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. They don't really come with a whole ton of accessories. They come with cards, though. So let's get a closer look at those trading cards. Then we'll get a closer look at each of these statues one by one. Sorry if you guys hear back background construction noise i can't help it at the moment but anyway we get trading cards with each of these statues i'm just going to call them statues for now and they also come with backdrops which i'll show off later on but taking a look at them they do look pretty nice and i like that we get the cover inspiring each of them and you can see on the back there's a little synopsis and you can see which issue it was inspired by here it is for x-men number one or wolverine anyway Looking pretty cool. I have that one. I don't have all of these. And this is Steve Ditko's last Amazing Spider-Man comic issue. I first thought this was a John Romita Sr. image, because it does look a bit John Romita Sr., if you ask me. But I guess when you look at these pictures right here, it still it looks a lot more Ditko. And then here's a look at the back. Here's the Deadpool New Mutants 98 cover, which I don't have. If you have an extra one, uh, just send it to me, you know. It's fine, you know where the P.O. box is. And uh, yeah, it's not happening. Uh, but yeah, very cool that we get a synopsis and then info on the back. And then this one I also have. This one's a legendary comic for me. I love this cover so damn much. So this was the must get for me. And then here's a synopsis and the issue t number on the back. <laughs> looking at the Iron Man and this looks great seeing metallic red and bright shiny metallic gold on this Iron Man and it also has a lot of this shading going on over here too so again this is the card that inspired the figure or statue and I, I think they did a pretty good job with it man I, I do like it they added a backdrop over here which you obviously don't see on that cover there's some shine right over here does look pretty good. You have this little cardboard insert that you have to put in there. You've got some reel-to-reel -reel action going on. So the floor looks pretty nice. Text and everything sculpted on there. So that's pretty dope. I do like how this metallic red and gold looks, though. This is pretty damn sweet. And they added some detail that we don't see uh, from the artwork, but I think it works. It almost reminds me of the Mezco Iron Man figure, the way they added some of these lines in here and everything. The boots look really good. So I really like the shading on this one. This one does look really badass. I do like it. I like that you could actually see his teeth showing right there through the mask. And you can see the eyes, of course. And then the back of it has some paint on it. And you can see uh, like this kind of scaly, stretchy, or scale pattern almost, you know, to go underneath 
so he could bend his legs and everything. And I think that makes sense. It's kind of neat to see. So added details and stuff like that on here. I think that's pretty damn sweet. So that one's really cool. And it would be nice. I don't know. I'd be interested in seeing a Marvel Legends figure that had this exact same paint scheme. You know, just use the 80 years version. And then you could see the Wolverine figure right here. It looks really good, man. I really like this. And I like that we have some orange mixed in with the yellow over here. You have the shading added. The texturing on the brown portions looks like it's supposed to, like if it was a real suit, it would be kind of made out of like a leathery material. I was thinking suede at first, but yeah, as you look at it, it's more of like a, like a leathery material. Kind of like, it reminds me of a Keaton Batman suit, you know? And then you have this ribbed pattern right here. He has hairy arms sculpted and painted over there. The back of it has tan brown instead of black, which is okay, I guess. It doesn't really bother me. I like how the face came out a lot, though. Claws look pretty good. Nice bright silver paint for the claws. So, yeah, it's sweet. And then, yeah, you have this extra texturing and pattern right here on the tan sections throughout on the figure. And it looks really cool. And then the leathery material right here, again, for the boots. So they're keeping it consistent. And then you could see the base right here, a little piece of Asteroid M. And it has some nice wash paint in there. And it looks pretty good. I, I do like that. So there's the text right there for X-Men. Looking pretty damn sweet. So this one's pretty cool too. And here's looking at the Ditko Spider-Man. I'm just going to take him off his base right there for right now. Now I do think this is an odd choice because it's not really one of the most famous Ditko covers. Or maybe to me it just wasn't one that stood out. There's a few other ones that stand out. To me, I think somebody was referencing or thought that he was talking about the one where he's swinging at the camera with the feet up. Was that Colt Kid? Was that you? But anyway, this is a little bit odd having the arm covering the face. I just think that choice uh, of a pose is a little bit odd. But looking at the paint, you could actually feel the cobweb pattern over it a little bit. It could still just be paint, but it's interesting that you could actually kind of see that the black paint kind of is just a little bit elevated right there so that's cool and then you can see the texturing right here for the blue portions i think that's cool got those thumper legs right there for that spidey logo and here it is looking at the back you have a web wing on one side you don't have it on this side because well that's how he drew it i feel like the color blue is off based off of the source material this looks a lot brighter than the blue that you see right over here and then, you know, the legs look pretty good. So not a bad pose or anything. It's just that the arm is covering the face, you know. And it's fun to get these guys displayed angling. You know, the ones that have stands, you could just port it into that metal stand and angle it however you want. You know, it'll kind of want to rock down. But if you push in hard enough, it could, you know, you can get a weird angle on there. And it looks kind of neat. Here's looking at the base. It says Amazing Spider-Man. You can see some bricks and stuff like that from, from rooftops. That aren't shown in the actual cover, but I think it's good that they fill stuff in like that. So that's pretty cool. And then we have one of my favorite ones, uh, Deadpool. This Deadpool looks awesome. I, I don't know. I just really like it, man. It, it looks good seeing the gray mixed in with the black over here. Yeah, it, this is pretty cool. I do like it. I didn't know you had like those shadow lines over the crotch. I don't know. Is it like that in the... It's not really like that in the card. Kind of. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't notice that... It, I guess, like, yeah, he has kind of like buccaneer gloves. I didn't really notice that until looking at this statue. But yeah, you can see he's got buccaneer gloves, silver right there for the gun. This is more of a knife than a katana, but he's still got his katanas right here on the back. They're a little bit warped. Maybe I could heat this up, see if it'll straighten out some. But, you know, they're all just silver over there. Not a whole ton of paint on the back of the figure, though. So it's a little bare as far as that goes. But you can see the shading on here. We get the Liefeld feet. I think he did the favor of, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Liefeld had feet on this one also. So there you go. But yeah, this looks pretty damn cool. I really like this one a lot. And the base looks sweet. You can see the X-Mansion right over here. All partially destroyed. Nice Deadpool text. You can see the library and everything. So that's pretty neat. We'll look at the backdrops more in a moment as we get further out. But I wanted to get a close look at the details of these because they look sick. This is my favorite one. Love this pose. And this is drawn by Todd McFarlane himself. Very pointy elbow. It's a, it's a trip because I've drawn this myself a few times. And I remember always getting to the elbow and thinking to myself, like, man, that is an extra pointy elbow. And then seeing it in figure form right here, it's like, yep, that is an extra pointy elbow. I don't care, though. It's it's accurate to the artwork. That's what I wanted. I think I could feel the cobweb pattern a little bit on this one. 
And then I love that we have some shading right here for the blue. So that's cool. He's got the cobweb, the web wing right over here. He has that in the art piece right there. It would have been nice if they were able to make all that webbing. That infamous McFarlane webbing would have been really cool to get on here. But, you know, that, hopefully somebody... I don't, yeah, I don't know how they would manage doing that. I'm just trying to think of practically adding that to there. But I'm not going to want to deal with that. But anyway, you can see some highlights right here throughout. And yeah, the pose. Like his hip is possibly broken. I don't know. I don't know if that's anatomically correct, but I don't care. It looks badass. It looks cool. That's McFarlane for you with the Spider-Man poses, you know? More about looking badass than, you know, trying to make it as anatomically correct as possible. So there you go. And then you have the base right over here. Got some floor for you right there. High fiber. Ooh, wrong superhero reference. <laughs> Danger zone. All right, there you go. And you could rotate him if you want to. But for the most part, he stays, you know fine just facing forward but yeah you could still make that work want to bring out the cardboard backdrops i did have to tape them on this side right over here because they're open as you can see right here uh when you try to use them without taping them it looks really silly but you can see the backdrop right there for iron man plop that on there that looks pretty damn sweet and then we have some more asteroid m for wolverine and you can see him on there. Uh, doesn't look too bad, right? Oop, knocking over my lens. Then here's the Spider-Man, still all sideways. And you have this cartoony looking city street or cityscape right there. So that one's kind of cool. If you have a blue piece of cardboard you could put in the, in the background to help with that, that makes it look even better. I did have some fun with that. I really like this explosion right here, the X-Mansion blowing up for Deadpool. So this one works out really well. I do like that one. And then lastly, we have another city backdrop right here for Spider-Man, which, you know, I don't really think that particular scene had Hob... You know, I don't know if Hobgoblin was there. Like, when you look at the cover... Here, yeah, the, the, it's just a green background, so they just filled, in, filled it in with a bunch of city stuff over there. But, hey, it looks pretty cool. Then to get some measurements here to give you an idea how tall they could be, Deadpool's the tallest one, and he's standing at about seven and a half inches... I guess Wolverine is one of the shortest ones, just under five inches. I guess the Iron Man actually is the shortest one. Yeah, he's closer to four inches. So, you know, they don't really all scale. Oh, and as far as the paper backdrop goes, that goes at around nine inches tall. So that's the highest that they'll get in case you want to put them on a shelf. But I don't know, man. They, these backdrops take up a lot of space, as you can see in this image right over here. So having them side by side, I think is going to be a cooler way to go. If you guys remember my interview with Todd McFarlane talking about these, I asked if they would scale together. He said they won't really scale together, but they'll still look cool. And I think they do still look cool. You know, they represent their comic images well enough that I think they look pretty badass. <clears throat> would I rather have them scale together? Of course! But these still look pretty neat side by side. And then I'm only going to give you guys two size comparisons. Now, I think these are marketed as one-tenth scale figures. And the Captain America GameStop exclusive. And there's a Spider-Man figure that I don't have that's also from the same line. <clears throat> I think those are supposed to be a little bit larger. But I have a one-tenth scale Spider-Man from Diamond Select Toys. I did want to put that next to Deadpool here. Ah, they don't really scale together. Um... Yeah, so Marvel Select is a little bit too big for this line, but here's a Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man, and it looks like he could kind of fit. It, uh, not really. He's just a little bit too small next to Deadpool here. I guess he's about the same size as this Spider-Man, so I guess some of these... I guess the two Spider-Mans would kind of fit in. Would this Wolverine work? I don't know. He might be too big to fit in a Legends scale. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit shaky as far as scaling goes. But, you know, on their own and even side by side like this, they do look pretty cool. And I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, I ask you to take your thumb out of wherever it is and put it on that like button. And if you're new here, well, you can just go ahead and rub that thumb over onto that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future content. And these things are very fun to photograph. They're not action figures. These are statues. And with the backdrops, it really does elevate the fun factor. I really like the texturing and the details really stand out more when I'm able to get some nice close-up shots of the figure or statue with the backdrop totally covering the background. That's actually where I had the most fun with these over anything else. 
I don't know exactly where I'm going to put these on display. Uh, my shelf space is fairly limited right now. It's pretty tough, so I don't know exactly where they're going to go, but uh, I do like them, and they do look pretty cool, man. I think I'm going to put them by my trade paper pack, my trade paperback bookshelf. I think that would be a cool spot to put them. But yeah, uh, I think they are neat. I just think the price point is a bit high. 30 bucks kind of feels like a lot for each of these. Uh, I would say I would feel a little bit better about the $20 price point, but they are cool. They, they have an appeal to them. If you are a fan of the particular issues that they're based off of, that's where I really think the consumer is going to be happiest. Like for me, I really wanted the Deadpool and I wanted the Spider-Man number six ones like those two and the X-Men number one Wolverine. God damn. So those three right there are my favorite. I still like them all though. The Iron Man is really cool to see. Even though the Iron Man, more than anything else, I'm looking at it as like a test painted prototype for an actual Marvel Legends Iron Man. That would be really cool. And if, uh, hey, if Hasbro was able to look at this and go like, hey, we could add some of those textures to our figures, that'd be kind of neat to see, right? So I don't know. They're probably not going to do that. But hey, it was just an idea that crossed my mind as I was looking at these. Like, hey, some texturing of the fabric, like getting more of that would be awesome. And McFarlane Toys does that on their DC multiverse figures too, which I, I do appreciate. Anyway, I digest taquitos. Uh, I'm at the price point of around 30 bucks for each of these. I'm going to give them a sud rating of... It's not too bad. And I'd like to know what you guys think. And yes, I rated them all together as one, uh, just mostly due to the concept of the whole thing. So I'd like to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see the latest Marvel news, you can see it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, whatnot, and Mercari. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. That's crispy. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't. Shot, 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 shot,